Island background? All right. That's what I'm I just just type in whatever you want. Oh, that's a good one. Fine. Oh, palm Frank's trees. It's, I found mean. the creepy knife. Unmuted this entire time. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> hey everybody welcome to the thursday uh, uh uh show tonight uh surprisingly not cacophony although you may eventually eventually caitlin see a familiar face You're that you normally would on thursdays. Well, well, need a laugh. well you know kyle actually you, you and i have both been on cacophony too so We've yeah, somewhat but familiar. neither of our characters matter. So, that's right. Entirely new thing. It is February fourth. We are starting the new campaign. Cthulhu comes. Everybody dies. Uh, also known as the Consolation Campaign because these four losers couldn't get onto the real campaign that happens on Saturday. Um, no, that is not true. I have to say those words, otherwise Frank will mute us and cut us off the stream. Um, sorry, guys, I may have let the cat out of the bag there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, to be fair, I was trying to come up with a better name for the show. Uh, turns out The Hobbit is already taken. Also, there and back again. Same book, it turns out. Yeah, I don't know. I All sure. right. Hi, Kyle. I know. <coughs> this is Murder Hobo Inc. You can find us here on Twitch. You can find us on Twitter. You can look at our archive over on YouTube, also on Twitch here. Uh, if you want to shoot the shit about D&D, you can come to our Discord channel. You can come there later tonight where you can talk about what happened this episode. I wouldn't do it. There's nothing that's really going to happen in this episode. Uh, you can also go to the RPG shop where you can find some cool uh, gifts. Uh, unfortunately, you can't get the cool shirts. That no one is actually wearing right now. I was. They don't even exist. Don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> You'll see it on between the rolls, but I was told I should wear something costumey, so I'm wearing something costumey. But I love my shirt. <laughs> oh, and then let's also thank our sponsors, uh, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like shit. Uh, get their dog shit dice. Uh, they roll all sixes, I'm told. <coughs> They're D20s, which is the weird thing, but, I mean, whatever you're into. Uh, and then finally, we'd like to thank uh, 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 Oddfish Games and their Adventure Sense. When your game stinks, get some Adventure Sets. Uh, they do have a dog poop one. Um, I don't know why you would buy it. It's actually worked into the sewers one. Um, that's it. You guys are quiet tonight. This is so strange for me. Usually I have someone trying to talk over me. I don't want to interrupt or you. <laughs> I think think DJ is just being creepy. That's all. DJ is just being creepy. He's being I creepy. I figured the smoother this goes, the faster we get to actually plan. Come on. Yeah, come oh, on, DM. God. Well, I was trying to give Caitlin a chance to get back on screen, but... Uh, let's go around the table real fast since Caitlin's not here. Uh, Carol, why don't you start first? Introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. Don't tell us about your character quite yet. Don't make me I'm still getting ready. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, My... time. Wow. It's going to say, hey, hey, what's this? Five minutes in and somebody's already talking over me. That's like the norm. Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Carol. Uh, I am uh, playing a character to be named soon uh, in this campaign, but uh, I was in the last campaign, I played Taryn. Uh, I play in the one shots and I'm on, I, on B, I'm on between the roles fairly regularly. Also, my usual line is I'm a long time gamer, occasional GM and a commission ma mini painter. So that would be me. All right, Ernie, why don't you go next? 
Uh, yeah, so my name's Ernest, and I was also in the previous Saturday campaign. Um, I am now going to play playing a totally different character. It'll be interesting to, to see what that looks like. And uh, if you want to see Kyle and his previous one shot, I recommend the uh, Grinch one shot around Christmas. Uh, that was good. And uh, I'm excited to actually get started. Okay, and if, if that's a hint enough, I <laughs> know right. I can't wait either. God. Okay, so we've had these guys on the hook for like a month now, and so no pressure on me about you know getting this thing started. Uh, DJ, did you want to introduce yourself, or do you want to nod your head up and down and just say that's DJ? That's DJ for you. <laughs> wow, he's not going to talk? Uh, I knew yeah. he was doing the costume. I didn't think he was going to just be... <laughs> right. And down below, finally oh. showing up, is Caitlin. Go ahead and introduce <coughs> Caitlin, but we're not hey. talking about our characters yet. Just myself? Just yourself. I am so I thought. So I am only here on the sole purpose of Earth to... Mostly stress out Carol, and secondly, to stress out Kyle. So I'm Kaylin, and that's who I am. Wonderful. Delightful. <laughs> Are we all ready to go now? I that's think yes, so. Yes. Oh, and, and Kyle, did you, yes. this, you don't need any more stress, you know. Uh, Heidi's in chat. She's here to troll you. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Screw you, Heidi. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to say nice things about fucking Heidi all fucking night. <coughs> Fuckity doo da day. Just keep in mind, this is for mature audiences only. If you have kids in the room, they probably should have gone to bed by now. What parents are you? Are your kids in bed? They're actually behind the green screen right now. <laughs> all right. Oh, God, Let's here see. we go. I know. Uh, uh, usually I try and write something up for the very beginning. And I couldn't decide how to start this one off yet. Um, All right. Well, then let me get started. I cast Eldridge Blast at Carol. <laughs> All right. We're doing this now. I have. <laughs> you don't want to do that. All right. Um, just a few <coughs> uh, added things I wanted to uh, add right now at the beginning. Um, uh, screw you, Critical Role. This, uh, we were doing this first. <laughs> Uh, we are going to be running through a uh, Cthulhu uh, 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 saga uh, from Peter. Wait, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Sandy Peterson. There we go. Um, which we'll talk about after the show later tonight before we cut off. That way, if these people want to take their headphones off so they don't know which one they're playing through, they can do that. Um, essentially, we're still playing D&D &D 5e. We're just adding a new rule set uh, uh, known as Dread. And we are adding a further emphasis on the mythos. Um, there is going to be death. There will be insanities. Uh, none of these insanities that happen that are being portrayed by these characters are, are in any way real life insanities. If you are having trouble, you should contact somebody. Uh, but keep in mind, no one's making fun of any insanities. We're just role playing fantasy wise. Um, and with that, let's get started. <laughs> so, in the beginning of the world, there was nothing but the cosmic pudding that started with stars in the sky, and from that cosmic pudding came the worlds, the planets, the world as you know it, um, came, and there was water, and in the water we had creatures living there and eventually volcanoes sprouted land came and from the land man came out unfortunately man was neutral the things in the water were hungry and war broke out but over time man was be able to conquer new and mystical things magic technology much faster than those who live below the surface and eventually uh, man was able to overtake and crush out and send those things down to the deepest darkest 
holes in the ground. Which is where we start off in a large sea. Um, where things have progressed quite well. Several nations uh, uh, have sprouted up in the area. The most important to you guys right now is the location known as Arulkatan, which is the shining star in the Sea of Tears. Um, the reason known for this is that it is the highest magical thing uh, uh, in the land. Uh, however, there has been conflict, and while there is a tenuous treaty with the other nations, um, there is more to the world outside of this bottleneck, uh, where sits a strange little island known as Farzine. The nations there know that um, should they ever get their hands on the island, build some fortifications, they could control all trade that leads out of these out of the seas and thus rule over. Many countries have before have tried to take in the Farzine. Some have just tried to settle there. Others have tried to take it by force and none have been successful so far. The council of Arul Katan has decided that it is their turn, but they are the farthest out of the way, but they intend to be the most civilizing influence on the island. Uh, having uh, 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 pfft, brain fart here, guys. I apologize. Okay. Um, they uh, intend to be the most civilizing by bringing advancement and making nice with the local people there in order to gain control and squash any sort of uh, retaliation that the other nations might give them by cutting off trade flow if necessary, which is where you four come in, in some fashion or another. Um, if we'd like to imagine a camera, we're zooming into the city where sits high above the sea is this diamond island floating in the sky uh, connected by several bridges that lead into this massive walled town that will eventually lead down into the docks. And as we zoom in on the docks, we see that there's this huge celebration. We see several members of the ministry there uh, and cheering, roaring crowds, confetti falling out to the ground everywhere. Ah, huge crowds. Uh, eventually, uh, um, Oh my goodness. You know, I wish I remembered all this a little bit better. <laughs> it's okay. We see Lord Corwall come up to the stadium. He's an older, regal-looking gentleman, gray in his hair on the sides, but it's still there. It's still strong and still stern. And he's telling the crowd, we are going to take the Farzine Island. And soon we will be in control and we will bring such wealth, such fantastic things. And we will outstretch our arms out into the seas and the oceans beyond our little sea here and through the nations. And the crowd just goes, ah. And we cut away from that scene. And with that, guys... Why don't we roll a d20 and we're going to see who we go with first. All right. First roll. Oh, hey, that's a 19. All right. Ah! Oh, uh, boy. Oh, eight. boy. <coughs> I'm just straight up 12. Okay. Did he roll a one? <laughs> <laughs> Good start, <laughs> creepy one. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> we zoom away from the scene at the beat or at the docks where everyone's cheering and crowding and the screen goes black. And then it slowly begins to light up again in this brilliant azure lighting. And we see on this floating island where staircases, floating staircases lead to and away from. Uh, a figure begin to rise, standing in front of two 
huge uh, gentleman dressed in vestment robes, looking almost identical if it weren't for this gray steel beard on one. And on the opposite side of a set of stairs is one with a snowy white beard. Um, we see the figure staring, looking around at this blue area. It's You can't see too far into it. It's just like you're floating around. And as she looks around, we see a cat bump into her leg. Excuse me. And the cat continues on and goes down the stairwell between the two gentlemen. The two gentlemen look at the lone figure. <laughs> Beware. The path of head is very dangerous. And as the person looks between the two, we see these winged flying creatures with massive horns on their head. A hand clutches the figure, turning them around. Another cat, this one with six legs, three eyes, says, Anya, it's time to wake up. Oh. Oh. Anya, where are you? And Anya, where am I? Where am I? You appear to be underneath a bed. You look out and you see Kellyanna looking to. Anya, we have to get going on the boat today. Let's go. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, give me a minute. Let me just make myself presentable and pack sure. my things. And, and we do that. skip ahead and we find ourselves in a carriage. There is young Kellyanna, a, uh, a dark haired uh, woman who looks entirely too com uncomfortable for the nice uh, uh, clothes that she's wearing. Uh, next to her is uh, uh, an older man. Let me see if I can remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, oh, that's Bran. Poop on you. Oh. I'll hold you up. Pyrex. All the names. Huh? I'm gonna hold you, know. you up. All the names. Yeah. Be a raffle at the very end of the campaign. Oh, I know. There will <laughs> be a remember it's all the names. Legit, I'll give you 20 bucks. <laughs> Is there? Yeah, I won't even remember all the names like a dumb dumb. I was gonna bring something to actually write notes on and forgot. That's okay. I have my notes and I realized I didn't actually write them well. But we are inside of a carriage right now. We see Kellyanna in with her dark hair, pale skin, looking very uncomfortable in these uh, nice clothes that she's wearing as well as uh, uh, another older gentleman. Uh, we re recognize him as Pyrex, one of the council members. Uh, long, flowing beard. Really resembles the guy with the snow white beard you had kind of seen earlier. Uh, and then we see Anya Yanger. And Carol, if you would like to describe your character. Well, sure. Uh, you see a, a half-elf. Um, probably about uh, in the upper range of five towards six feet tall uh hat definitely likes to wear green i don't know what's going on in my camera because this was supposed to be a green shirt uh but really likes wearing green um and has a, a scimitar a scimitar and a short sword and let's see what else oh uh of course dark deep red hair um and green eyes I think you're muted. <laughs> you like, I wasn't going to talk that long, man. I know, I, I know, I know. I'm always surprised when you don't. <laughs> All right. Short and we see point. you guys, you're riding down this carriage down to the docks. Um, Pyrex turns to look at you, Anya. We were able to take care of the cult last night. Uh, some members of the Bokab religion actually came and squashed quite a few members of it last night. Nonetheless, our men are searching for any scragglers, but I do think it's still the best way is to get you out of this town and onto this island of our scene. I, I don't disagree with that logic. I'm glad you think so. Okay. And he... Uh, actually, Kellyanna actually reaches down between you and she pulls out this letter 
as well as a pouch. This is for the blacksmith, and this is for the uh, offering before you get on the boat. Uh, we should be getting there very soon. Okay. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you too. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything you did to help. It was the least I could do. Uh, and with that, you go out to staring out the window at the streets rolling by. And as the camera comes back in, we are back in another carriage. This one is entirely different and nearly stuffed full. We see uh, two men dressed in plate mail with great swords uh, next to them. And one is an Asmar, much older character. The other one is a, a young human man who is just getting over his acne phase as there's a little bit of stuff going on on his face. And we look across from them and we see uh, another Asimar. And with that, Cleo, would you like to describe your character? I need my mute button just so you don't hear me typing all the time. But like, do I need to be described? Look at this beauty that you see within. I radiate God from me, basically. Everyone's just completely infatuated. Like, just such a goddess. Just worship me. <laughs> do you glow? Do you seriously glow? I feel like I glow from the within, which comes out. I'm still a very young Azamar, so... My All wing. right, she glows. She's going to be the target for everything that comes by. <laughs> no. I am like the glowy holiness everyone dreams about <laughs> in many ways. I have luscious purple hair, purple eyes to match. There's a cat. Meowing in the distance. <laughs> yes. It is a cat meowing in the you distance. You look out the window, it's that same black cat from Anya's dream. It is a black cat. <laughs> Don't mind Billy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, she's dressed in all black, almost looking like she should be this holy goddess, but also, why does she look evil? And I think the cat's about to vomit. Oh, vomit. No. you got vomit. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's vomit everywhere. Okay, uh, we see this scene and it is quiet. It is tense. Uh, Cleo is very sullen looking, and everyone in the carriage is quite tired. Eventually, though, the older Asmar turns. This is for the best, Cleena. Your friend doesn't need any more trouble than she's got. And it would be good for you to be out of the city. Your uncle Jerome hands you a bag. <laughs> uh, the images are going to be seen. Do not worry about that. Um, and at that point, after he hands it to you, you arrive. With that, <coughs> we go out of the carriage and we enter into a very small room made even smaller by piles of books everywhere. Uh, save for a small area in the center there where a haphazardly drawn circle is, uh, we see a lump on the floor who is waking up to sunlight shining in their eyes. And uh, who do we see, Ernie? You see a very young half-elf with greenish skin and scales and claws. And he's wearing reading glasses as he's a, a book nerd and a researcher. Hold on. Okay. Uh, just thought of this. Uh, who's that character from Naruto? Um, Orochimaru? This, is it Hirochimaru, the stick? Orochimaru, Oroch yeah. Yes! <laughs> it, not, or are you talking about Kabuto with the glasses? Naruto has 
Maybe no it's way! Kabuto. It's Kaba. It's Kabuto. It's I Kabuto. think you're talking about, right? Kabuto. The, yeah, he's the nerdy one. Yeah. He's the one who's uh, underneath Orochimaru for most of the. Yeah, time. Kabuto. Okay. Not, Kabuto. not yes, if that's right, uh, DJ. Uh, okay. Oh, that's it's it's, it's right. It's right. <laughs> and by the way, he yeah, but he's he's good looking too in a nerdy sort of way. That's why he wears the mask so we can't see him. Oh, Kabuto, no. not DJ. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> as the sun is streaking in onto your face and into your eyes, you <coughs> realize, Riley, that you are late. That boat is going to take off without you. Don't start running down the stairs. And as you gather a handful of your stuff, your book, pick it up off the floor, this heavy tome, you run down the stairs, and as you do so, you plow into an old man. Uh, you don't have time. You continue running uh, until you see your Riley! And if you turn around, you see Colton Regis, your uh, former employer. Now you can continue running down the street if you want, or you can go over and talk to him. No, I, I, I shout to him, sorry, Colton, I have no time. I have to catch my boat. Oh, but you forgot... Sh- and away you go. Oh no. Was he holding <laughs> something out for me? Yes, he was. <laughs> can, can I run back and snatch it really quick? <laughs> I don't want to miss out. <laughs> you run back real quick. You snatch it real fast. He's like, oh, here. And he hands you a steaming cup of coffee. And you start <laughs> running down there as well. Is oh, I thought fly- it was something important. Just coffee. Oh no, he hands you the sack, same as what you saw Anna and Cleana get earlier. Cleo get earlier. Yeah. I was going to ask if there was a flying J in this town. A flying J. That's that's no crossovers, right? That's a that's the cacophony coffee. That's stuff. like a bar oh, or something or coffee. Is that where you get coffee from? I forget. It's I, fl- I think it's the flying J in the in for cacophony. There's it's so a places. it's a truck stop Starbucks. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Is that where we get our coffee? Yes, that's where you get your coffee. Also, shout out, thank you, Mickey, for complimenting on my hair. <laughs> and finally, we start in another black room, pitch black, when all of a sudden, Master Bran, it's time to wake up. Shh. <coughs> you're going to be late for the boat if you're not. Oh. And uh, we see well dressed butler who has opened up this wide curtains into this tall room. The ceiling's almost 20 feet. Uh, A large bed draped with uh, that curtain, that little awning that goes around the bed. Uh, And I imagine not sleeping in it, but probably just sitting cross-legged on the floor or at a desk doing something. We see... (laughs) What do we see, DJ? You see an individual... That is dressed as you see here, mostly all in black robes, like Dr. Mask, that of a raven, holding a necklace amulet in his hands, being silent, looks up at the butler. Yes, I know it is time. Shall we go now? Uh, Yes, sir. I've had the carriage brought around to the front. Um... And you go down this long hallway with lush red carpet, busts on the wall of various nobility, pictures hanging on the wall. All right, can we back up? I want to see if you're like, hey, who's looking under my dress when you said red carpet? I thought it would be purple. Maybe. Who knows? Okay. Anyway. That's the Daphne coming in. <laughs> Bran, you are escorted out by the butler. Um, as you get to the main hallway, these ceilings here, nearly 60 feet tall, you can see the decorations for a wedding occurring. And as you go down, bustling into maids who are carrying uh, uh, large bouquets of flowers, uh, uh, the butler um, 
turns to you. Um, sorry, sir, but Lord Corwell does have other business to attend to today, and he was not going to be able to see you off. Um, I he has that. made sure that you receive this for your trip. And again, this fine silk bag is handed to you, and there is a heavy weight inside of it. <coughs> we'll look inside. If you open it up, you see uh, a large gem, probably worth about a hundred gold pieces inside. Uh, an offering to make sure that your trip is safe to the sea goddess before you get on the boat. I see. Uh, and your father uh, has also asked that you bring this to your brother before we head out. And hands you a package that's wrapped up. I do not look inside. I hope not. That'd be rude. <laughs> and with that, he escorts you to the carriage, opens the door for you. Before I head in, I will check to see if my instruments and tools and reference guides are packed away. Uh, there is a trunk on the back of the carriage that if you do open up, it is stuff that you had packed previously to make sure that you would have a most successful trip. Excellent. And to the wagon, and it takes you forward. Or not wagon, carriage. Oh my goodness. They treat you like trash here. Let's let's look. <laughs> and we follow this carriage through, and we follow the other carriages and a running young man. And we turn the corner to the same courtyard where we see the yelling crowd. Only it's completely barren and empty. There are other than just the dock workers there who are busy loading boats up with their daily thing or taking fish off their boat. Uh, it seems boring and nothing to be expected. And we read underneath the screen five years later where we see our characters show up. <laughs> you missed the big big deal leaving that happened five years earlier is what I'm saying. <laughs> and as each of you uh, arrive, you see the boat that you were to get on, the Hazel's Folly, which is this awful looking boat. It has scars. It's clearly seen some cannon fire at some point or another. However, everything's been patched up. The sails are furled at the moment, so you can't tell what they look like. And the crew is busy loading things on. And as you get to the end of the dock, you see each of each other, as well as uh, uh, two very large men uh, in plate armor. <laughs> and before you have a chance to introduce yourself, you hear, what are y'all logging gagging about for? You're the workers were hired to take over to Farzine, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Well, so then quit are. starting and dawdling about there. Throw your offerings to the sea goddess. Get your stuff in there and let's get to work. You already missed loading up the boat. So by, by <clears throat> uh, giving our offerings to the sea goddess means to the actual sea? You toss in the bags. Okay. Or you don't. I don't know. Well, I, do. I wasn't sure if it was the, if the offering was for the sea goddess or for somebody on board. <laughs> so we're paying to take us there. Um, the offering is obvious <laughs> to me because we know I am God's gift. No. Your uncle oh, Jerome no. reaches around, grabs your bag, and throws it into the water. Yeah, I'm gonna throw mine in. I'm gonna go on board the ship first, and then I'm gonna throw it in the water. It seems like mm -hmm. Uncle Jerome would not upset me that early. No way. He would just be like, "Yeah, she's God's gift, but like, you better give me the benefits." <laughs> Did you forget what your backstory is already? I feel but I also just kind of my uncle. He's also like, you know, kind of really out for himself, right? That's what happened. 
he's an asshole, but not to that. He's an asshole, but like that narcissistic type of manner, I feel like. You know? Oh. Unfortunately, at this point, you have. He threw my stuff out. over. He really wants to deal with me when he throws my stuff overboard. I don't know if anyone wants to deal with that. Funny as you say that, because he then turns to Jeremiah. You will be taking care of her and you'll escort her there. Cleo, you are not to argue with him. Get on the boat. And then he turns and walks away. And you are left with Jeremiah. You just see my face, as pale as it may be. It's just going to turn like cherry red. You can just feel the heat of the anger just like penetrating from me. Like as if maybe someone started a fire. But clearly no one did. Riley, Bran? Yeah, I definitely throw my offering. And... I make sure it gets into the sea. I don't want to, you know, have my boat sunk <laughs> midway. Um, I'm not just going to chuck it into r- some random direction. I'll make sure it actually gets in the water. Uh, and I get onto the boat, I guess. Um, I take some notes into my tome, name of the boat, and some of the things I see and some of the people I see. But I, I do get on board. Who is Hazel yeah, and what was her folly? Yeah, Hazel's folly. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened to this probably. fucked up boat I need to hear this story later her folly is probably <laughs> buying this boat <laughs> and Bran Bran will take the package that his father gave him place it over the edge drop it in the water and give a quick prayer Floats down. Everyone sinks like there's a rock in it or something. <laughs> May everyone have a safe journey. And I will head on the boat. On the boat. You get on the boat and you see the uh, person who was yelling at you is this old man with the big friendly mutton chops, although his face is in no way friendly. Uh, covered head to toe in tattoos there's mermaids a sea ogre uh, a couple of other things an anchor all the fun stuff you expect i'm first aid adam pasela you'll be sleeping down below to the far banks you'll find your bunks stow your gear there and then get ready to work you too missy as he yells at Cleo. <coughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm already ready. All, all my belongings are, are pretty much on me. Yeah, same don't, here. I don't have much. Brian um, will take some of the extra packages that he has and bring them down to the bunk area. Yeah, and I ask the old man, uh, all right, what, what do you need me to do? I'm interested to learn what sailors actually do on these ships. <laughs> Well, first, we're getting ready to go, so you need to start tying up the lines there and there. Uh, have the triplets show you what to do there. As for the rest of you there, start climbing up the sails and unfurl it. We're heading off here soon. Okay, so I'll leave, I will store still my extra bags and my extra pack. So I might just have one backpack. Then I'll come back out and I'll help. And I'm, let's see... Yeah, I'm pretty good climbing and such, so I will help with the sails. Sure. I'll go ahead and roll a acrobatics check for me. Acrobatics. Either one is good. And Riley, if you want to roll a sleight of hand, you begin helping. Sleight of now hand. You, mm-hmm. you know, um, the 19 would have been good this time, Mr. Day. Uh, that's, that's an 11. All right. Oh, both of you are <coughs> doing well enough. You climb up there, you untie the ropes. Uh, and Bran, Cleo, are you doing anything to help out? I will assist as needed. Um, I will climb up and... Someone ask upon me to help. I will just sit there and feel like, hmm, I guess I got it figured out. (laughs) Again, they'll ask you to work on the rigging on the ropes, sails, and so if you guys want to help out, 
I'll go ahead and roll an acrobatics check for me as well. I will help with the ropes. Sure. Well, that's a nat 20. My help. Oh. 25. Now, what was yours, Cleo? I'm rolling acrobatics. Acrobatics. We let's see. It's a solid lucky 13. All right. You managed to, both of you, get all these ropes untied and... Uh, Bran, you take to it like a fish to water somehow, and while everyone's a little bit creeped out by you, uh, dressed all in black and wearing a giant mask, they nod in their appreciation. Um, at which point you hear uh, first mate Aiden, Captain, we're ready to set sail! And to which a young woman, uh, green hair, large eyes, um, stands up at the boat and mind you this is a quite a small boat actually it's made for hauling cargo there's no actual steering wheel or anything like that there's just a giant rudder there's three sails all in all then see to it first mate Aiden and with that you guys are leaving uh, the docks of Arukatan possibly for the first time Oh my goodness, people, you guys are ridiculous. Anyway, um, and out to sea you go. Um, while, while we're at sea, can I actually approach Bran? I, I want to uh, ask him about his supplies and, and reference materials he brought on. They, they're quite interesting. Uh, what, what, what is your hobby with these? Brand is, I'm assuming, doing whatever work around the boat is necessary. Uh, I do not know if there's a uh, physician on the boat itself. Uh, oh, you're a physician. That, that's quite interesting. I'm a, a researcher myself. Uh, I, I study more things like arcane and, you know, religions and cults and things along those lines. But uh, I would love to talk to you more about this in the future. I... I'm a follower of the Raven Queen myself. Follower of the Raven Queen? I've never heard of that. That's quite interesting. Uh, please tell me more in our journeys, but for now, I want to help out with this ship while we're underway. Of course. And Riley, as you turn around, you meet uh, the third crew member of this ship at the moment. You turn around and slam into <coughs> a, a mass of flesh sewn together with one hand on a mop is this huge towering undead construct what? with a grappling arm and he kind of moves you out of the way and he starts swabbing at the deck interesting uh, I, I poke at him a little bit and write some notes in my book <laughs> You see, Captain Kenza, that would be Masetto. I suggest leaving him alone. He came with the boat. We're not quite sure what he's about yet, but at the moment, he does work. D does he need to eat or sleep? I don't know. He came with the boat. O okay. <laughs> and Masetto just squeeze, shoves right by you, and he continues to swab at the boat not doing a very good job but just doing it nonetheless uh anya cleo anything you guys are doing or want to do um ow. uh anything to keep helping or just uh hanging out at the rail looking at the scenery i mean like as long as someone's like because like like sick or anything like i'm just chilling there <laughs> my dad sent me upon this trip so like i'm just gonna do the bare minimum all right first mate uh approaches you a little bit after you've gone uh out to sea so as you guys are fine riggers, especially you 
Bran, you said your name was? Yes. Good. We have a few other things you want to do. Uh, if you're interested in learning Navigator, I could use some help with that on occasion. Mozetto could always use some help swabbing the decks. To be honest, he misses most of it. Bran will... And you see Mozetto just to say, slam like, into Bran the mask. is often looking towards Mozetto. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can I help with the navigation then? Of course. We'll have you do that a little bit later today when it uh, clears up a little bit more. We also uh, need some help. There's Nibi down below. She, she does our cooking in the galley there. She always needs someone else to peel potatoes. Other than that, there's not much else to do on the ship other than just make sure everything's tip-top shape. Said I'm good at physician I'm... on the ship. Sorry, what's that? Do you have a physician on the ship? Uh, to be honest, no. This is a new ship, new crew. New no ship. One's... <laughs> new to us. Me and Captain Kenza back there. Fair. Mm -hmm. I can help attend to anybody that has any problems, toothaches, swells, sores, the like. That sounds lovely. Hey, boys! And he yells out, and you see the other members of the crew. You see three dwarves, uh, uh, another pair of half hells, and... Oh, <laughs> yeah, Nebby herself pokes her head out from underneath. Any of you boys got splinters? Crowface here thinks he can help you out. And they all have a jolly laugh and they turn and, all right, quit working. Get back to work. Quit laughing. Get back to work. <laughs> <coughs> and with that, if you would care to make your next roles. Uh, Riley, as navigator, uh, why don't you give me uh, three survival roles? All right. Uh, or if first, you happen to know how to use navigators. First, first roll is a nat one. <laughs> uh, second roll is a an 11. Okay. And last roll is an 8. I did great, guys. Ow. So, <laughs> oh, God, not even that long before you get out of a rule katan, <laughs> Aiden looks over to Riley. Yeah, why don't you help with navigating? It's like, All right, yeah, sure. Uh, we need to bear, bear starboard a little bit. And you immediately hear this. <sighs> Which way is starboard? <laughs> Drive into a reef. A no, little sandbar like, there. We're about to reach some like Titanic. And everybody else roll. Well, everybody roll a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. All right. Um, Deck save. Not one. I don't know if I have my. All right, I'm gonna use dice. Dice. Uh, Dex would be. Uh, wow, that's an eighteen. All right. Brand. 19. <laughs> and Cleo. 16. 16. That's the lucky number. You guys are all all right, except for Riley, a cat on board, and one of the dwarf triplets, as you all three go overboard. Overboard? Oh, oh, I immediately shit. grab ropes <laughs> and start throwing them over that are attached to the boat, by the way. Uh, let's see if I'm... I'm not Frank. I'm going to assume the best of intentions. All right. I'm going <laughs> to, I, I, for SNGs, because I'm not sure where I am on the ship, I did roll like a 19 as a check to see if I saw them go over. So I'll say that's good enough. So I'm going to try to get over and help as well. Sure. Try to get them out. Is any of the crew helping me too? <laughs> I won't, I won't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you I see guess. the two dwarves are throwing a rope to their uh, uh, sister who landed in the water next to you. The cat 
uh, is pissed and is grabbing at the <laughs> nearest one of you, uh, Odd Riley, even, starts clawing at the dwarf. Oh, no. Oh, poor, poor dwarf. Poor dwarf. How could you guys? <laughs> Uh, and Olo, the dwarf uh, woman next to you, is just getting the shit scratched out of her. Uh, but her brothers haul her in. And uh, Bran, Anya, why don't you go ahead, or one of you, give me a uh, uh, an athletics check to drag Riley back to the boat. I, I guess I can? Oh, well, with advantage. From... Oh, with advantage? Well, that's advantage. good. Those are craptastically bad rolls, man. Oh, act. Uh, and would you say athletics? Yep. Oh, God, that was a nine with advantage. Well, a four and a three. Fuck my dice. All right, let's see, Riley. What's happening? To you? <sighs> You're okay, uh, but uh, how are you swim? Do you swim? Are you proficient in athletics? In athletics? Yeah. Uh, no. No, I'm not. Go oh, ahead and shit. give me a strength check then to make sure that you uh, you can swim. We hope. Strength check? Yep. Oh, uh, oh let's see. Uh, that is a 13. 13. You're fine. You're staying afloat. <laughs> you really did not expect to be in the water. Uh, and with that, uh, Bran or Anya, if you want to roll that second... Uh, athletics check to try and get Riley out of the water. Bran, do you want no? Is that a no you don't want to? Bran right. rolled a three. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. Are we doing it with advantage? Because I was, I'm helping. I was going to say you can do it with advantage or you can roll it separately. Your choice. What's do you want to roll it again? or roll? Separately? Do it again, Bran. I trust you. 14. I mean, 14. That's much right. better. <laughs> you managed to get the rope out to Riley. <laughs> Riley grabs a hold, and both of you just give me a flat strength check at this oh, point. Oh, okay. Well, oh, that now that was a good one. Uh, 17 plus 3 is 20. 12 for me. 12. Uh, oh, yeah, my Brand, you don't have to do much work as Anya just <laughs> hand over hand <coughs> pulls uh, Riley up, and you find yourself on board. And uh, a finger taps your shoulder, Bran, and you turn around, and it's uh, uh, Pasela. Now, about that physician service, um, <laughs> there's a few people who might need your help now. <laughs> and he points back, the twin, who obviously has the scratches, uh, and the cat is currently curled up next to Captain Kenza, royally pissed. And looking directly at you, Riley, like it knows that it's your fault. No, don't worry, I'll, I'm going back to navigation. <laughs> Are you? I'll I don't at... think we need you in navigation for the rest of the day, Riley. Why don't you go down below and peel some potatoes? Oh, okay. I, I'll, I'll actually look at Riley as he as you brought him up. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Just a little wet. All right, that's good. Um, Oh, you're one of my fellow uh, companions that's going to this island to claim it for our kingdom, I guess? Um, nice to meet you. I mean, I, I, I was told that we were to bring civilization to these people and make friends. And uh, as a researcher, I feel like there's much I can learn from them and much I could teach them. So I believe Sounds that's like... why I'm going along. And my name is Anja. Nice to meet you. Anja Yeager. And you are? My name's Riley. Uh, unfortunately, I, I was told I have to go below deck to peel potatoes. I, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I know. I know. I'm just trying to figure out who, who else I'm traveling here with. And I look at, I'll thank Bran. Well, I don't know it's Bran yet, but I will thank the guy. I go, and I'm like, and you're one of us too, right? I will, uh, as I'm setting out some ointments and Play antiseptics and such. I will look to Anya. Yes, my name is Bran. Seems we've already had an exciting time. Wow. I must say, you're quite strong. Very impressive. Thank you. It helps. It certainly helps. Uh, I am. 
I'm good with swords. And I believe I have been sent along on this mission to help protect everybody, probably more than anything else. I'm sure our lives will be entrusted in your strong arms. Thank you. Well, you were very helpful too, though. And I don't know, what is there to do right now after that bit of excitement? Go back to the rigging, I guess. Brand will spend some time uh, tending to whatever minor wounds and whatnot people have. I'm assuming it's non-hit point stuff. Unless it is. You're muted. <laughs> Bitch. Always, man. I want you guys always. to do your role playing and not <laughs> be interrupted by me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I assume you got a couple of healing kits. Uh, yes. Uh, I have one within inventory, but I'm assuming there's probably more some stuff here. Okay. I would say you use up one of the uses of the healing kit, but you do heal multiple people as you kind of bandage up uh, Ola, and you see her two brothers uh, uh, nod at you, thanking you, and um, uh, they seem to take a better liking to you now at this point. Um, as for everyone else, luckily you hit the sandbar, but it was a small one, and a wave pushes you up and off of it and you continue on without actually needing to do much else the rigging this kind of work it happens every once in a while you guys are actually pretty well crewed this thing could run on a crew of four so by yourselves if necessary but none of you know how to sail so don't even think about killing the crew i know how to navigate (laughs) <laughs> I was say, <laughs> I wasn't gonna you say that. You do. <laughs> I was gonna say, considering the type of game this is, it wouldn't surprise we all wake up and everybody would just be gone, but the four of us. No, that undead would still be here. Oh, okay, that's true. Yeah. It'd be so sad if we all disappeared because I really want to play my ASMR. No, 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 no. Everyone else is going to disappear. We'll still be oh. here. Okay. Wake up and everyone else will be gone. Yeah, my uncles will still be here. <laughs> your uncle's gone he left you yeah yeah we, yeah I, you're with jeremiah who is currently below decks oh well it's still someone from the church so yeah sure. not fully alone <laughs> <laughs> uh no um you guys are over crude and after a while of peeling potatoes if you wanted to go down and talk to riley or more you guys can congregate and role play amongst yourselves. Oh. Oh, boy. I, there's only one person I haven't. I mean, we sort of knew. We, did we get any description of like the other people that we're, we're going with? Or You have not. Um, do you know Captain Kenza, green haired captain? <clears throat> um, she seems to be uh, uh, rather uptight. But ever since you guys left the dock, she actually has a hint of a smile around her face, uh, uh, around her neck or shoulders, or watching other crewmates here and there, you see her cat, Nuki, uh, a gray cat, Um, the dwarf triplets, Ade, Olo, and Matwa, uh, uh, two male dwarves and one female dwarfs. The male dwarves are very shy. Um, and then the Ogilwa twins, uh, Banda and Kassa. Uh Banda is playing a tune on his uh, uh, lute currently. Uh, uh, Kasa is rolling her eyes as she uh, starts pulling on a rope. Uh and pacing the ship back and forth when she's not working. Other than that, you see Mozetta, who is pushing a mop back and forth across the ship. Like there's a pile of pigeon crap right there. Seagull crap. And he goes right by it, does not (laughs) clean it up. (laughs) And when he reaches the boat, he just kind of stops there. And an hour later, he starts up again. It's like a Roomba. Uh, 
quite as well working as well. <laughs> so like a robot. Um, actually, then it's then it's probably easy enough. That everybody's either crew or us, so it's probably easy enough to figure out who the fourth person that is not a C person. Oh, on then air. you also see a young man clad in plate mail, oh. either down below or <coughs> an eye on Kleena. Uh, and then Riley, as you're peeling potatoes. Uh, you are with an older half elf woman by the name of Nibby. And she's just talking your ears off. Oh, have you ever been to Farzine? It's such a wonderful place. And oh, there's such these other lands too. There's Vilik uh, to the north. They have some of the best mangoes you've ever tasted in your life. And oh, Derry, watch out for the knife there. It's a, it's a little dull. You don't want to cut your thumb off. And she is just chatting your ear off riley i don't know if you care for conversation or not oh i i love it uh i ask her more about farzine uh any good foods there any places i should check out what's what's uh the news about farzine i've never been there well it's uh supposedly the star of the seas here i mean i know that the shining sea star is supposed to be a rule Catan, but second in place is farzine uh, it's an island out there with a volcano, and they have some of the tastiest alcohol you've ever had. I can't drink it anymore, though, because, you know, I wake up the next morning, and my head is pounding. I'm just getting too old for that. He does that and checks on the soup a little bit there. And uh, Dear, no, that's an onion. You need to peel the potatoes. <laughs> ah, thank you. And she just goes on and on without any breath and you, you I'll, think I'll keep like listening you're... <laughs> and every 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 once in a while I'll, I'll uh you know put the potato and the peeler down and scribble a note in my tome that i have laying on the counter next to me and then go back to peeling smacks you with a wooden spoon <laughs> every once in a while if she catches you um yeah yeah we'll save that for later um now no go ahead and roll an intelligence check and that's to see if you catch anything good coming out of her mouth as she goes blathering on and on and on i, I rolled a 21 you rolled a 21 yeah yeah um at some point she starts mentioning that you know the farzine isn't the next place we're going though we still have some last cargo to pick up here in Rizante. I don't know, you seem quite a bookish lad, but they have a, a house full of books over there. Every single tomb, supposedly. But da -da -da, and she continues on and on and on there. Oh, I, I, I interrupt. Uh, do you know how long we're stopping at Rizante? Oh, just to pick up some cargo, I believe. I don't uh, know. It's Captain Ken's trip here. Uh, you guys at Rule Catan, you pay good money, but not that good enough to buy a ship like this. And so we're picking up some uh, other cargo there, I hear, to uh, help pay for the rest of the trip. Oh, do you know uh, uh, the difference between a russet potato and a red potato? My favorite part about the red potatoes is that they don't mash quite as much. They're a little bit waxy, and the russet potatoes, they have this nice starchiness that makes a good, good mashed potato. They're not good for soups, though, unfortunately. That's why I like the gold potatoes. And on and on she goes. Yeah, I'm taking notes about the potatoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And there is a certain point where if you wish to break <laughs> free and explore the rest of the ship, uh, I'm not going to ask for rules from you guys for a little bit if you want to role play amongst yourselves. Um, or I ask more questions. I don't care either way. I'll... I'll take a walk around the ship and check things out and, and uh, introduce myself to the other crew members and maybe I'll find Cleo at some point. So Cleo has a babysitter. Cleo has a babysitter. I feel bad. I feel bad. Uh, so, I mean, I guess eventually I'll probably bump into her, I would think, because I'm just going to wander around the ship if I've got nothing to do at the moment. And I'll go, yeah, you don't, you don't particularly look like, um, you don't particularly look like a sailor, uh, Ms. 
Uh, are you one of the people? Yeah, you. To me? Yeah, yeah, because I, I assume we're kind of, I assume this is probably just you and your chaperone and whoever, um, wherever, where are you on the ship right now? I'm wandering around, so just trying to meet everybody. I'm just like, yeah, you know, my dad decided to send me a guest on this, like, retreat to, like, better myself. You think it's a, a retreat? You called it a retreat? It's a retreat, yeah. It's like a, I don't know. Well, <laughs> you probably will definitely walk away from this experience of maybe a better person. I don't know. I mean, we're there, I guess we're bringing civilization to a rather, uh, how do we put it, uncivilized island. Uh, but my name is Anja. Uh, what's your name? Uh, you can just call me Cleo. And yeah, like, I'm just on for the adventure for the ride. We'll just, you know, I'm here with my uncles and this dude. Which casually Jeremiah is just behind me anyway, so he's just always around. You've got oh, you've got a you you've already got somebody who's protecting you, huh? Uh I think he's just here to you know, make sure I get to my retreat. I don't know. This is just up to my dad. Is she's just someone part of the church, you know. To make oh, sure you don't oh, cause any I more see. trouble. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> he just pipes up to make sure she doesn't cause any more tr trouble. And then casually just like, I roll. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be fine. So you're, and you're Jeremiah? I will get Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> the way the third been, Jeremiah. Thought, the thought process is going. Oh, is he proficient? Does he have swords or anything like that on him? Uh, he does have a great sword with him. Okay. Does he look like he can? <laughs> the way you're talking like him. Does he look like he knows how to use it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I get to be knighted by uh, as if I do successful on my mission. What is your mission exactly? Just to make sure she gets to the island, or I'm, sh I'm sure it's to be cannon fodder for the story. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you coming with us once we're there? Or are you going back home? I've been asked to keep an eye on her, make sure nothing else happens. I see, I see. Oh, well, it was nice to meet you, Cleo, and uh, I'm sure we'll have an interesting adventure together. I mean, like, are yep. you part of this retreat too? I'm pretty sure oh, like, everyone uh, on this boat's part of it. I don't think everyone on this boat is part of it. I think the people that are on this boat are probably just going to turn around and go back out to sea once we're dropped off. I think there's like four of us. The four of us that don't seem to be like sailors and such a part of this group, or five if you include Jeremiah. Actually, is there anybody else who? Uh, with we us, been, like the four of you are on the retreat. Yeah, that totally makes sense. It's like totally makes sense. So, the only thing else on this ship is cargo down below. Yeah. Oh yeah, like people's luggage and stuff. But she, but the Cleo <laughs> Jeremiah is the only other um, non-sailor on the ship. Correct. That would be correct. Nobody else has any other chat. I know my shepherds didn't come. Uh, for real. <laughs> uh, yeah, and as you're talking, if you look over Cleo's shoulder, yeah, out of the corner of your eye, you see uh, Nuki just standing there and watching you. The cat? The cat. Can I make an insight check? Sure. If I can do that. Well, that's decent. Uh, insight, insight, insight. Oh, it says one of my train skills. Ah, uh, 18. 18? Yeah. Yeah, as you look at this cat, stare at it. It squints its eyes at you. I squint my eyes back at it. And then it turns and uh, heads back towards the captain. 
Did I get anything, figure anything about the cat with that 18 inside check? I don't know. Did you? I don't know. You're just reading the, the cat and have... it does seem intelligent and it does seem to be looking at you, scrutinizing you. So meanwhile, Cle- Cleo, of course, is standing with the back to the cat and probably sees me making weird faces at it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I will wish Cleo well, and I will kind of shrug at the, that weird interaction and um, keep checking things out. Wait, so you're just going to walk away? I'll be like, OK, oh. bye. Well, oh, oh, well, I figured. Bye, Anja. It was nice meeting you. We'll have plenty of time to talk. Oh, by the way, I really dig your hair. Uh, purple, pur- other than green, purple is one of my favorite colors. Uh, well, thank you. It's like, you know, God is hair. God is hair. All right. It was, it was lovely to me. I'm said, I'm just trying to figure out my way around this ship. So, sure. you know, might help. Like I said, it's a very small ship. Um, you have uh, the captain's quarters, like which are locked to you. Uh, you have the galley. You have the cargo down below. Mm-hmm. Uh, where there are various crates as well as uh, stone and uh, wood from the mainland. And uh, in the front bit, there are a bunch of hammocks where you stored your stuff earlier, yep. if you did, and where the crew who are currently not working are eh, maybe getting a sh- bit of shut-eye. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll go back up on the top deck and stare at the scenery and the critters and see if I see any dolphins or anything. Yeah, as we get near midday, uh, let's get some rolls. If you are helping with the sails, give me a dexterity acrobatics. Uh, you've been kicked off navigation, Riley. I apologize, oh. uh, but uh, give me a survival check or cooking utensils to see how the peeling of the potatoes go. Survival check. Not one. Mm-hmm. Oh Jesus Christ! I rolled a two on my acrobatics, so that's a that's a total of eight. I failed my survival check with the potatoes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm pretty you sure. Cut I... your finger off. Yeah, I, I'm not used okay. to my rotated hands yet. Give me another twenty. Just and a regular twenty, or Just survival. A plain old flat twenty. All righty. Um, two. You uh, don't cut off your fingers. <laughs> Luckily enough, uh, you don't notice <laughs> that one of the potatoes is rotten, and you put it oh, into the pile no. in the pot with everyone else's. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Anya, as you go up, you start having trouble with some of the rope there, and uh. uh Cassa, the half elf female. This is how you do it. And she knocks you out of the way there. Uh, does the rope. She's not a friendly um, uh, uh And Brian, what are you up to? I also was doing rigging and I rolled a rigging? 20 for that. That dexterity acrobatics? Yes. Got a nat 20? Again, yes. Yeah. He, he rolled down D and D Beyond. He got a twenty five. Um, so I, not, not to try and give myself a second chance, but yeah, to give myself a second chance, I did learn a lot about potatoes. Maybe do you think I would have noticed or have advantage on that roll? <laughs> <laughs> no, I even took notes. <laughs> You know, Nebby was just talking your ears off, and as you were writing the notes, you just tossed this potato in the pot. That's fair. I probably had disadvantage, <laughs> actually, because I wasn't paying attention fully. Uh, uh, and as mid-dia- midday meal is served, everybody roll a constitution save. Oh, God. From what? No, wait. Bad potatoes don't necessarily make you sick. I find them all the time in the canned soup. Yeah, they, they actually ferment. But um, do they? Oh a, God, I'm gonna fail that. I'm gonna start rolling. I, I rolled an 18 on my Constitution save. Uh, it is delicious. It tastes great. 
So I don't want to say it, man. I didn't roll a one, but Bran I two, will so have four. soup, but he actually just, you know, curates it, so to speak, it. and then eats it with through a straw. All right. But yeah, he rolled a six on his constitution. Thing, but... I rolled a four. <laughs> I rolled a two. Wasn't a one. It was a two. Uh, Cleo, uh, lunch is served. Uh, did you do anything to help <laughs> out with the ship or were you enjoying your resort time? Maybe sunning on the uh, uh, top deck. I feel like it's me just sitting on like the deck or bothering the captain. Like, are we almost there yet? Give me a persuasion roll, please. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Crew doesn't pay you any mind, even though you're not doing your equal share, and they uh, just walk around you, continuing their thing. And at midday, you are served potato soup made lovingly by one Riley Trickett. <laughs> so, so please give me a Constitution saving roll, so I can tell everybody who failed what happens to them. Yeah, I'm waiting because I know I failed. Constitution saving time? That is correct. Twelve? Twelve? All right. Let me see. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. One, two. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, the cat won't eat it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, my goodness. All right. He's fine. You poison the captain. <laughs> the cook is all right with your food, as well as the bard. His sister and the three dwarves, however. Uh, his it sister... looks like I've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all right. To... Bran, Anya, uh, as well as Captain and... <laughs> yep. Yep. And we get the Asa bad Rudo. potato. <laughs> That's what it is. Not everybody got the bad potato. It was just you, those of us who weren't likely to get the pieces of the bad there's potato. There's two batches of potato soup. One was good and the one was deadly. I think so. One was made by me. One was <laughs> made by Nebby. All made with love. Seriously, Riley, are you trying to prevent us from getting to this <laughs> island? I, I mean, mean come on. it's unfortunate, but um, I'm a great navigator and great cook. Trust me. <laughs> oh, but not at the same oh, time. God. So what exactly? Sorry, what exactly is the effect? Are we poisoned? You are poisoned. Like the condition. Like the condition. Oh God! And that'll end on the following day. Oh, uh, goody. Hopefully. Uh, oh. But before we do that, well, go ahead and let's give <laughs> us the evening uh, uh, preparations. Um, Riley, you have been hey, politely I... asked to um, sit in a corner at this point. <laughs> who, didn't, <laughs> who didn't roll so good? Who didn't roll so good? Yeah, like they didn't, like, which part? didn't like the potato soup. Me. Um, it was the captain. Me it and was Bran. the sister elf and Bran and Anya. Okay, can I go up to them and like pull a flask out of my oh. bra, basically? Be like, hey, I think this will make you feel better if you want some. I've been sipping on it all day. What is it? Who are you giving it to, by the way? There's you get choice. Whoever rolled terrible, whoever doesn't like clearly doesn't like potato soup. I'll be like, hey, I think this is gonna make you feel better. You only got one flask. All right, well, what is it exactly? It's just like some magical brew that like I just use when <laughs> when you just need a little extra relaxation. Sounds like it's alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try wow. it. Wow, did you roll an insight check for that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> rolled an 11. 
Uh, what, it's uh, also made from <laughs> potatoes, but just a different. Oh, it's vodka. <laughs> oh, it's vodka. I see. I see. Um, I'm not going anywhere, so I'll try some. What exactly is it? I I give you, give you something. Is it alcohol? Of course, it's alcohol. What else would What else would I be? I take a sip and realize it's alcohol. I'm like. Okay, and that probably isn't going to help much. Oh. Uh, Brand will uh, I like probably better. attempt to make some uh, stomach medicine. Uh, okay. Since he is not feeling well, we'll see how well this goes. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm rolling medicine with a disadvantage. Medicine with disadvantage. Oh. Oh, very oh, good. T- that was disadvantage. So 19 was my lowest. <coughs> oh wow holy crap yeah uh go ahead and roll a d4 uh twice take the higher number three each three you have three to give to whoever you like we'll give it to the captain, Anya, and the dwarf. What about you? I will substa- I will abstain. Okay. Are you sure? All right. I'll. Ch- what What exactly is it then? Pretty much Pepto Bismol. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take it then. Go ahead and roll another Constitution saving throw. All right. Let's see. Let's see if I can roll down here. And the dwarf and the captain. Yeah, that's set. Oh, yeah, it's just rolling in here. Captain is feeling much better. Ah, and... 16. I got a 16 this time, so I guess I'm feeling better, too. All right. It yes. was the fermented potatoes. I mean, she... That's what did it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, are there any extra potatoes I can steal? I pipe up from the corner. Can I help with anything? Yeah, for these potatoes in a barrel. Um. And uh, with night approaching, um, it's a beautiful evening. uh, uh, Red sunset. I'm sure that doesn't mean anything, right? Red sky, sailor's delight. It means things, the weather's good, actually. There you go. Exactly <coughs> as I planned. Uh, and at I this point, if you wrong. all wish to fall asleep, you can do that. If you want to uh, keep watches, what would you like to do tonight? Um, I'll I'm go going to sleep. sleep. <laughs> okay. Brand I'll stay will. up late. I'll stay up late, though, enjoying the weather. No, I go to bed early. Brand will go over medical text for a while before he medical text? He is a doctor. I feel like I hear him reading it to himself and it just like sends me into a deep sleep. So I'm like, yawn. There may be some muttering. (laughs) Keeps hearing these crazy outrageous words. Actually kind of sounds weird because it's uh, a lot of it actually goes over Pressing on various people's bodies at various points. Secretly thanks to self. Uh, just uh, uh, so everyone knows, this is for mature audiences only. Uh, yeah, someone <laughs> needs to be mature. It isn't us, you know. Five. It certainly isn't us. No, nope. uh, there's I, no maturity I, up here. It's just a little light reading for the evening. <laughs> All right, let's see. Only one one. So, Anja, as you are up late into the night, the hulking form of Mosetta looms behind you. Roombaing away. Roombaing away. (laughs) He's the man. And as you gaze out looking at the ocean, uh, uh, it begins to light up uh, underneath you. Shining bright azure light. Wait, what? What? Well, there's a light coming from the ocean? From the ocean. 
Uh, I stand over and I kind of uh, look. Make a wisdom save. No, I'm kidding with you. <laughs> if you look in there, uh, if you look over the side of the boat, which you did, um, oh. you see uh, all along the sides of the boat these large, luminous jellyfish. Actually, yeah. a few of them even larger than the boat. Oh, friggin'. Floating by. Nope, 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 nope. Well, that's me saying nope, nope, nope. <laughs> uh, Anja actually is going to yes, sit there. Yes, we're and doing we're, Cthulhu. <laughs> Anja's going to sit there and just think it looks amazing. I, I It's, wow, it is just really cool. I wish I, I wish I had a device where I could, you know, capture this moment forever. But that doesn't exist in this time period. No. Meanwhile, if you look underneath the water, you see one of the jellyfish pointing at you, and it pulls out a Kodiak. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just floats away. Like, what? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, and we continue on. Uh, uh, weeks begin to pass, and um, go ahead and give me some more rolls. Riley, uh, if you want to get a chance, you should probably roll a persuasion Please. check. <laughs> um, all right, I get a plus seven to this one. Yes, there we go. go, Riley. Come on. 23. I get to help again, right? I get to help. What would you like to do? <laughs> um, what am I allowed to do? You are able to talk your way into Nebby's galley again. Uh, and, you know, after a couple of days out, he's like, it was a total beginning accident. You watch over my shoulder for that. <laughs> I'll be fine. So you can pick whatever you'd like. Uh, th then after helping with Nebby, I, I want to try navigating again. I want to learn this. Okay. Roll a navigation check. Uh, Bran, if you're survival, to, it's the survival. You're correct. Uh, Bran, uh, Anja, both uh, acrobatics. If you're helping with the rigging, sure. Cleo, if you are still uh, uh, enjoying the sunshine and everything like that, give me another persuasion. Yes. And let's go back to Riley while you guys do that. Uh, I rolled an 18 Sorry. on my survival. All right, I I'm able to navigate now. <laughs> Fifteen for persuasion. Okay. Uh, Bran and Anja. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, which is actually acrobatics. Acrobatics, yes. Okay, yeah, fourteen then. Okay. Eighteen acrobatics. Uh, which one? Eighteen for acrobatics. Acrobatics. Yeah, no. Uh, Bran, you have the love and you are an honorary seaman to everybody on this ship's eyes. Uh, uh, you are spirit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't say it with a straight face. I apologize. I don't apologize. It There's no saying a a joke. that's not possible to say it with a straight face. Oh, come on. It's just a bunch <laughs> of semen, guys. <laughs> um, uh, after a while, uh, Anja, you do uh, uh, earn some trust from uh, Casa as she looks on like, all right, she she's learning. Riley, uh, no one in particular is happy with you now, but with the fine navigation, everyone's feeling, all right, okay, you can keep doing this. Cleo, at this point, you are ignored on the ship. No one's happy with you. And Jeremiah is just ah. twirling his great sword back and forth, drilling a hole in the ship. Um, just out of curiosity. Okay, he doesn't drill a hole through the ship, but he is quite poor just watching you. Uh, and with that, everybody roll me uh, D6s. D6s. Mm -hmm. All right. Four. Okay. Ew, cause peace, man. Okay. Six. Six. And one. Bum, bum, bum. You hear, uh, Captain! Looks like pirates are coming upon us! And for those of you who are on deck, if you look behind you, 
there is indeed a much bigger ship than yours flying a black flag coming up behind you. Captain Orr's furl up the sails, drop anchor. Everyone get below deck. There's no way we're outrunning this. What about fighting? We don't have cannons on this ship. <laughs> we have I can blast them. <laughs> you want me to blast them? I'd rather Wait. just pay them off. Oh, okay. I'll go below ship. You are the captain, so I will so I go below deck. We'll heed the captain's advice and go below deck. I will make sure that I grab up a few of my own belongings, though, and store them on my person. I feel like the important stuff. And Cleo. We're going to assume you go below deck as yeah, well. I'm, I'm just going to be like, uh, I guess because everyone's going down, there must be like some meeting happening downstairs. <laughs> I should probably follow. Okay. Uh, guys, go ahead and give me that last rigging check. Uh, navigation is not really necessary at this point, uh, but if you want to help them out with that, you can also roll. Yeah, I'll help. I'll do a quick strength Look check to hell. drop the anchor. Oh, well, oh, yeah, I'll help with the anchor. That's I'm going to help with the hole, too. I, I rolled a four. Helping with anchor. Wow, I feel outrightly <laughs> awesome because I rolled a twelve. I think it's like Riley and I wanted to help, Crack and instead we just hug each other. <laughs> we just like run into each other as we both. Try <laughs> <help>. <laughs> <coughs> I'm helping. Some disappointed helping. looks from everyone on the ship. Mozetta, lower the anchor, and Mozetta just walks over, picks up this huge anchor. And drops it into the ocean. Uh, Bran, I didn't hear what you said. Over a 10? 22. 22. Wow. You get the sails up in a jiffy and you are below deck. Uh, Anya it takes you a little bit longer, but you also go below deck. Yep. And Captain Kenza, before she close it, if you hear anything happen, storm aboard, but hopefully they take the money. All right, I'm gonna. Then I want to position myself as close to the door, so I can hear what's going on up top. Sure. Go ahead and make a perception check. Oh, Anyone right. else I'm wants using to listen the in as well? D &D yeah, D &D I Beyond would rules. like to uh, also oh, listen like, in. Oh, you're putting your Amazon in e-shopping. It's my favorite thing. Nineteen. Eighteen. An 11 for me. An 11. So we're all like at, like at the door doing this. I'm just actually against Anja. I'm just like, can you hear it? I'm just like, <laughs> I probably am not like that close. That's why I only got 11. I'm trying to hear you're it. You're actually it. right next to Bran, and you're kind of messing with Bran, so he has a little bit of trouble hearing. Luckily, uh, uh, he's between <laughs> you and Anya, so you can't screw up her hearing so well. Uh, so you guys hear the sound of a ship pulling abroad you start hearing some rocks ah, yeah! and the thump of grappling hooks hooking to the side of the ship and then the thumping of feet and with that Anja, Riley you hear uh Miss Kenzie, what are you doing out here? We thought you drowned a long time ago. And Captain Kenzum, uh, clearly I haven't, Barkist. So what are you doing out here? I hear there's this wonderful uh, ship laden with lots of good going down here. You wouldn't have happened to hear anything about that, would you? Uh, and with a large sigh, that would be my ship, Captain Bacchist. And the conversation goes on for a little bit. Um, and Captain Kenza offers him a large sack. Oh, bribe is it now? And he opens it up. 
That looks good. But uh, between old friends like us, I mean, I always treated you well on our ship when you were pirates together. I hear you have cannons on board stashed below for a little island out nowhere. Take the money and go, Barkist. Quit being a little dog like you used to be. And with that, you hear smack. You won't be talking to me that again. It's Captain Barkus now. Boys, take over the ship. Start searching the hull. And with that, burst oh. out. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm pulling. I'm basically, I'm pulling out my weapons quietly. <laughs> I'm not quiet. I kick open that door. Do I need to roll strength check? Please let me roll strength check. And then I blast. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Well, the roll is. a strength check. Yes. You roll a one on this. This is going to be hilarious. Uh, no, I rolled a four, but I get plus one, so it was a five. <laughs> okay. I kick open that door. <laughs> a five. All right, so Yay. keep in mind, this isn't a door. This is like a little... It's a trap uh, door. It's a trap door, and you go to try <laughs> and you bring your, your foot up, you kick it, and you fall down the stairs. <laughs> I opened uh, the door for you guys. Charge! Yeah, you did. <laughs> Bran, Anja, <laughs> Cleo. You could be like less dramatic about it next time. <laughs> <laughs> I only know maximum effort. <laughs> Everybody, let's roll initiative. Yeah. Uh, but first, Bran, Anja, Cleo, <laughs> give me a dexterity saving throw to see if you roll at disadvantage. Oh huh. God! Huh. Before you roll saving 12. throw, right? Saving throw. 15 for Bran. Good. I got a nat 20 plus 2, so 22 for you my... Can go ahead and roll at save. advantage, if you like. And uh, Anja, 11? So my 11 next is a yep. fail. So, Riley, Anja, with uh, 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 disadvantage on your initiative rolls. All right, I'm going to just use dice. I got 14 for my initiative. Bran got a 6. Good. We're getting terrible. Uh, seven. Uh, yellow. <laughs> Cleo, what did you roll again? Fourteen. Fourteen. And Riley. I got a fifteen. 15? With disadvantage. Right. With disadvantage. Wow. <laughs> Very enthusiastic. <laughs> Woo! Maximum yeah. effort. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, Riley, you go to kick the door, you fall down, and the three dwarves are already rushing up when they hear that Captain Kenza has been smacked, and you get brought up along with them, and you, <laughs> you find yourself on deck. There are about 25 pirates, as well as a very large half-orc pirate who is standing uh. over... Uh, Captain Kenza. However, before you act, Mozetta takes a swing. Oh my goodness, that is at the half orc and does. Oh my goodness. Helps if you have all the stuff ready to go. Does seven damage as he clocks who you would assume is Captain Barkus with his grappling hook. What would you like to do? Who? Uh, Riley. Okay. Oh. And as you're going out, everyone is coming out from behind you, so a large fight is starting off. You find uh, a couple of the bandits eyeing you in particular. Okay, yeah, I peek out of the trap door and um, I throw out my hand and cast Eldridge Blast at the half-orc. All right, go ahead and roll to hit. Um, ooh, that was almost in that one. Uh, but I rolled 19 plus 7, so 26 to hit. 26 to hit will hit. I would hope so. And I did 2 damage. <laughs> ah, to be level 1 going up against a challenge rating 7. All right. Oh, we're going to fail. All right. 
I want to, like, put my middle finger up, but also I am trying to be a better person. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, luckily it's your turn. So, Cleo, what would you like to do? Uh, (laughs) And even as you head up there, you see Jeremiah. Cleo, get behind me! Into the down below the ship! Sorry. (laughs) Cleo, get behind me! Down below the ship! (laughs) I'm going to protect (laughs) you! What is what was it? It was like between me, like I think I had my previous game, whatever it was, darkness. I wish I had that right now to be obnoxious. Um, I don't know. What do I even want to cast? <laughs> How far away am I from this person? Uh right. Well, Jeremiah is down below decks trying to get you to go below decks with him. Uh and above you is Bran and Anja, who are a little bit startled about what just happened. So you'd have to run up to deck to see what's going on. Oh, so I'm not even up there? You're not even up there quite yet. Mm-hmm. Riley got the friendly push by a bunch of dwarves as they burst out. The dwarves are attacking us? Is that what it is? Now, the dwarf triplets were, were rushing above deck as well. And they, they helped me up. Basically... Basically, picture like um, crowd crowd surfing. He crowd surfed up. How much walking distance would I have to be to get at least within five feet of them? Easily. You just walk right up and you'd be in front of one of these. You would not be in front of the bandit captain in front of Captain Barkus. You'd be in front of one of the other pirates. I want to be like in between them so I don't destroy my party. And then I cast sword sword burst if I can talk. Sword burst, sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do I need to roll? A dex 15 saving. Dex 15. All right. Good plan. All right. Uh, both of them actually fail. Let's go ahead and roll yeah. damage. All right. You so am I just going to... I guess they both get six damage. Is that how it goes? Because it says everyone must make a... Or am I rolling twice to hit for 1d6? Oh, you just roll 1d6 and they'll both take the same damage. Six damage. Nice. Six damage. <laughs> Y'all. <All right. laughs> you see this tiny little gnome who uh, had an eye patch already, now needs another one and a <laughs> tall... Uh, elf who is now clutching at his knee as he gets uh, cut. Uh, with that, uh, Anya, you are up. All right, Anja. Uh, Anja. Uh, can I? Anja. I don't know how far. Let's see. I move thirty feet. Uh, you can get up and attack whoever you want at that. I can get to the captain without going through a sea. Or... You were right captain. up against the door right behind Riley, or right with Riley, so I imagine you're at the top. You take one step out, you're on deck. Alright, I, I'm, I I'm thinking about, you know, they say cut the head off the snake. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm thinking about going after the, the large half, it's, it's, would you say large half work that looks like the captain? Yep. Uh, I want. Alright, so if I can get to him, I'm going to move to him. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to make a strike with my scimitar. I, yeah, that's right. I can only make one attack, right? At the moment. If I move... Oh, no, wait. As, uh, well, you said you were drawing your weapon, so I imagine you at least have one out before you start, so if you draw the other one out... Okay, then I'll get both attacks. Two. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Then I will make two attacks. You know, I'm just going to use dice. Probably shouldn't. Uh, well, that wasn't terrible. Uh, let's see. The scimitar, that's a 16 to hit with the scimitar and a 15 to hit with the short sword. Okay. <coughs> uh, one of your attack hits, the other one gets blocked by the cutlass he's wielding. His AC is like 16. So the scimitar, I assume, is what hits. Mm-hmm. For... Oh, that sucked. That would be five points of damage. Not right. one on the six. <laughs> okay. And Bran, uh, no, I already know that your uh, dexterity is a lot faster. Uh, you tied with the rest of the bandits and the bandit captain, so you can go first. Bran will head up the stairs. 
mm-hmm. see that the uh, see the situation, and he'll he'll go after one of the bandits nearby. Okay. Try to disrupt them from flanking around everybody. Okay. I will um, first uh, strike them with my hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, open hand point to like the throat. Sure. That will only be a nine for the first attack. That will miss. Uh, and then as a bonus action, I will follow up with a with my second hand to underneath the arm. Uh, ooh, that's much better. That's a 23 to hit. That will hit. For a total of six damage. Six damage? All right. Now, were you going after just some random uh, uh, pirates, or were you going after, say, one of Cleo's who's already been injured? Um, we'll go after one of Cleo's, uh, one that's close nearby, uh, sure. trying to prevent them from surrounding us. Uh, you go in, you see that gnome, and you go down, but your finger doesn't quite get past his chin because he's uh, his eye. But then you just underneath the arm, and he falls down flat on the ground. Uh, and with that, it's the pirate's turn. And there are a few of them. So we will say there are two on Riley as he ran up. Does a 16 hit, Riley? AC 16. AC 16. So one of them comes up with their scimitar and does three points of slashing damage to you. The other one overhead swings, thinking that you were going to dodge his buddy there. And then we have... All right. That is a 19 to hit, Brand. Does that hit? Yes, it will. All right. The half elf goes walking around uh, Cleo and hits you for seven slashing damage. All right. And then Anya, as you went up to attack the captain, two pirates come up behind you. Ah, uh, really? It and... like. Uh, no one's going after you yet, but I, I'll change my mind if you like. Uh, oh, you fine. take four Weird. points of slashing damage, Anja. What'd you roll to hit me? I missed the, the number. Uh, that was a 21. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought it. But... I got decent armor class, but not that good. Sure. Uh, then the pirate captain Ugh. starts right. swinging. Oh, this is three be... attacks. That's nice. Oh! I'm going to die in the first session. Let's see. That's 18. Fudge. That is a nat one. Okay, that Don't misses. Worry. I picked the Spear of the Dying, so your character will still exist. There that you go. is a nat 20. What? The? No, no, I'm going to die instantly because it's going to do too much damage. <laughs> so the 18 hits Mozetta. Okay, so they weren't uh, all tax on me. That's good. Oh, jeez, Mosetta is fine. He gets one of his little stitches ripped open, um, and Vargas swings down at Captain Kenza, strikes between her legs. Um, nothing there worth hitting, so uh, not worth hitting, but you know what I mean. There's nothing dangling down there. All right. And finally, the natural 20 to Anja. Yeah, me. <laughs> Don't roll too high. You have to roll pretty high, actually, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is going to be uh, seven piercing damage. Oh, you. you don't actually take me down. Holy crap. As the dagger in his off hand <coughs> uh, goes swinging at you. Oh. Uh, and with that, um, Riley, you're up next. Roll me a d12. D12. Mm-hmm. All right. Nine. Okay. You're busy fighting your way on the ship. Uh, go ahead. And take your action. Uh, yeah, I have the two pirates on me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I am not going to do Eldridge Blast because that's range. So I'll attack with my dagger. All right. And... I hit with a 15. 
That will hit. Yes. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. And that is five damage. All right. Up next, Cleo. Uh, roll me a d12. Oh, can we just let me pick my own number? I am descendants of the goddesses anyway. <laughs> Only because I know I roll terrible. It's a five, a high five. Sure. Uh, as you start your turn, you notice that one of the pirates is chasing after uh, Nuki, who is oh. running after her captain who's fallen to the ground. Take your action to do whatever you like. Uh, you do still have an elf nearby, but he seems to be busy with Bran. Two are attacking uh, Riley, and two are attacking Anya. Um, can I? Oh my God! Can I cast bless on myself, Anya, and who else is not looking so hot in my party? Yeah. Who uh-huh. else took a hit? Bran took a hit. <laughs> so myself, Anja, and Bran, I cast Bless on Sue. Okay. Which is... Uh, Whenever you make four. an attack or saving throw, saving throw you can roll a d4. Four. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. That's <laughs> great spell, by the way. Love that spell. You can thank Kyle for that one. Mm-hmm. You speak my character a little bit. Mind you, make sure you click that you did use a spell slot when you cast that. Yeah. Because I'm not sure it'll show Hold up. On, I need, I it, need... does, it says at will, but I don't know if that's like... Uh... That's not something I could fix for you on the spot. Okay. So just make sure you click on the box saying that you used a spell slot, okay? That makes sense. All right. And we are on down to Anya. Anya, there's the pirate captain. Mozetta is fighting him as well. Uh, oh my gosh, I forgot about Mozetta. You want me to roll for Mozetta first? Yeah, go go ahead. All um, right. Uh, so I don't look so good, by the way. <laughs> I'm teetering. I didn't ask this, guys. Do you guys want to hit each other when a nat one rolls? That Wait, is entire- You know what? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's up to that's up to you. I mean, that's how that's sort of you the know, murder guys, of the way. If you don't have fun, then you know I don't want to do that to you guys. I've experienced that, and I've been the recipient <laughs> many times in previous games. I've been rolling lots of ones. I mean, As... I mean, I I so I do like the way that Frank does do it on here, which also gives you a chance of hitting yourself as well. And I think I like the kind of half damage. It's 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 not a bad mechanic. Right now, it'd be bad for me, though. It would be incredibly bad for you. Uh, so you see Mozetta take a swing with his large <coughs> grappling hook hand, and it comes Wait, for your head. This is what? You... I'm going to no. butt in on Kyle. And you know how there's that, like, uh, you get the channel points? There's got to be, like, you redeem X amount of channel points and get health back, but only during Kyle's campaign. Oh, I've I've got ideas. Actually, oh, got an yeah, idea. I got an idea for that. That we're as right, well. Girl, you and we'll, I discuss, like, we'll discuss it on a. We'll discuss it off in the green room. Yeah. After right. this, that this is that's a good point. But I'd like to know if I'm about to die or what. So who's Mozetta? Did Mozetta just roll a one? Because Mozetta yes. rolled a one. Oh shit! So are you are you gonna hit me? The yeah, you're the closest. Of his grappling hook comes swinging around. Well, he can hit himself. And you see it, and you dodge out of the way because oh, three out of one of you said no. I don't want to hit someone else. That's and fair. I play by majority rules. That's and fair. He goes for this winding swing, and he swings the grappling hook arm of his right into the captain, half orc captain, and he does. Uh, 21 points of damage. As Holy sh... <laughs> you know, that, that would have killed me if you did that many. Well, or half. Yeah, that still would have probably killed me. Mm-hmm. Alright, that's it. We need a freaking thing in the chat that goes mm, against all right, all right, all right. Like, all right. mm, extra bonus parts towards XYZ characters. Like, 
I'm it's, rolling, by the way. Sure. And if you want to give me a perception check yeah. first, that is fine. All right. All right. Hang on. Um, all right. I will give you a perception check. I'll do that in this chat here. Perception mm -hmm. plus four. That was, yeah, that was what I thought. That way is six. I see nothing. Yeah, don't worry. That I'm too cat focused. Isn't get beheaded. I'm too focused on. I rolled really well this time. I didn't even need the blessed things because okay. that's two. A uh, sixteen and eighteen on the die. So Who are you going swinging at? I'm swinging at the captain. Swinging at the captain still. Yep. Uh, if I'm gonna go down, I'm going down swinging. So, sure. uh, so that is going to be two hits. So that is let's see, two d six. Oh, let's use the murder hobo dice. Mm -hmm. They usually roll well. Well, five plus. I forget. Let's see. I add. Oh, I only add the strength bonus onto one of those, right? That is correct. Okay, so that is five. Are you so cheating? Are you cheating, Anja? No, I'm not. I haven't done. Any, I haven't. This is the first time I've hit twice, anyway. So that's uh nine points. All right. <laughs> All right, and after Anja, Bran, you are up. You still have one uh, wounded uh, elf pirate on you. Um, I will use my normal action to... Um, quick question for you. Sure. Oh, you did you want to roll the... that perception check too, by the way? Sure, I can do that. Oh, okay. We got an eight. Well, don't worry about it, guys. Um, then I will uh, attack action, attack the elf that's in front of me. Okay. That'll be a 20, dirty. That'll hit. For seven points of damage. And he goes down as you just take your finger and Jam it in one of those locations previously <coughs> mentioned. Um, I'll take a quick look around to see what's going on. Like, because uh, I have a bonus action, and I can still move. Sure. Um, um, as you look around, uh, um, you see the Wilcott triplets. You see one of the brothers down on his hands and knees, and the other two shoving a pair of pirates over their brother. And they fall out into the ocean. Uh, you see the bard and his sister, uh, Banda and Casa. He's distracting one as uh, uh, his half elf sister wields a great sword and takes it down on one of these pirates. Um, Nuki is run into a corner and she's about to get axed. Um, as Captain Kenza stands up with Mozetta and Anja, uh, currently surrounded by the three pirates. Mm. Then I will, since most of them seem in hand, I will move towards the cat and then attempt to jab the uh, individual in the back of the neck. Okay. Go ahead and roll the hit. Oh, you know what? I should add the plus four, even though that probably doesn't matter. <laughs> Might help. No, no, no it probably won't. Really well. Yeah, that's a twenty-five total. Yeah, I suppose that'll hit. <laughs> for six points of damage. Six points of damage. All right. Yeah, you managed to uh, 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 knock this pirate out as he takes a wind. And the cat slips between its legs and your legs. And as it does, it rubs up against your shoulder and heads over to Captain Kenza. Uh, the pirates you guys are fighting, uh, Riley, they start coming after you once again. Uh, uh, but both of them miss. Anya, uh, seeing as the captain looks like he has things handled, one of the pirates breaks off and goes after Cleo. And misses. Oh my gosh, this is why I hate rolling low. <laughs> All right, do we have a 16 to hit you, Anja? No, that misses. It probably bangs off the armor. 
Oh, that it does. Yeah, because my AC is 18. All right. And the captain starts going, swinging at Mazetta. Those (coughs) are going to hit. Let's see. 2d6 and d4. Yes, he nearly saws the arm off of Mozetta. The one no! he still has. Uh, and with that, uh, the fighting is still, but you see the uh, and the uh, uh, are evenly matched. Uh, uh, Riley, you are up. Roll me a d12. So you cut out at the beginning. Yeah, but, you're you're lagging. Yeah. I am. Uh, goodbye. G- goodbye. I... Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm still here. Okay. You're here. You're here. You're here. Okay. Roll a 12, uh, uh, and then we'll see what happens. Roll a d12? Yes. Okay. Uh... Are we going to lose me? 11. I hope 11. Mm-hmm. What happens? What happens? Yeah. Uh, nothing. Did we just lose him? Yes. No, no! We lost and he's gym. gone. <laughs> the world right. Dies. That means all the bad guys perish. You know what? I say we go down event. swinging. I say we... Uh... It's like you, when, you, when you are like, Every... fuck this shitty president, basically, you fucking do shit. I'm sorry. No, I'm just, I love Kyle. <laughs> but also, it's just what I think of immediately. Oh. <laughs> Everything's no, going wonky on the feed. Chaos, and everything's messed up on our No, screen. no, they're probably they're gonna wait for him to get back and then play with the cameras. Uh, Hi, everybody. So yeah. Kyle. Kyle's unfortunately everyone, Kyle's does not have the greatest internet connection in the world, as we have discovered. I am so stressed right now because our stream has like the most chaotic perspective of yeah, I can what actually look and see did? what people are when saying. I, head, I am part of the half elf. I'm part of you, Carol. Huh? So I go, my head up here. Wait, can you see me more? There's my eyeballs. <laughs> you can actually. I see what she's talking about. Uh, yeah. it's, oh, it's wow, and it's all over really the place. messed. Oh, my God. I, I didn't you realize that. it. It's, yeah, it's really messed up. Yeah, because everybody just turned into four squares. No. Oh, <laughs> God. No, I, 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 it's just the way because it's trying to filter. Really? <laughs> I mean, it'll fix it if you turn on your camera, right? Yeah. If you put yourself in as the actor. I look like I'm invading the GM spot. You are. Oh, I like I have GM? one eye creeping out. <laughs> oh, there's Kyle. Hey, Kyle, everybody. Hey. Well, no, that's they're... right. That's what I do. All right, Kyle. I rolled an eleven. What happened? You rolled an eleven. I uh, need to know. Yeah, we could keep talking. We could keep going here. You could keep going. Um, Wait, it's still like off center. It's not correct. I Sorry. am now Kyle. Oh, my goodness. It's okay. Oh, that's, that's I don't care okay. about the streamers. I care about the game. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, they can hear us talking, so we can keep going. Oh, Kyle oh. has been put into my slot, and I am dead as dying right now. <laughs> right now, I'm beautiful. Right now, my Brand. name is Caitlin. Ooh, I'm beautiful. <laughs> Who am I? Look at that, her. It's looking at her. You're on, Jay. I can't stop talking. Yeah. Carol's Carol's gonna kill me, but I can't stop talking. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Carol, I love you. I love. I Ouch, love we're you. getting mean, guys. I didn't um, say nothing. No, Riley, you friend. and everyone else, but you see directly over Captain Farkas, uh, uh, Mozetta, and Anja. Uh, you see the cat staring, its hackles raise, uh, and before That's your turn begins, Anja, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, perfect. Because we all know this is good for me now. Yeah. I'll use D&D Beyond. Right. Oh my god, that worked! It was a nat 20 for 22! 
Ah, uh, you know, if you had taken that natural one hit, though, I would make you take no damage from this. But as it is, uh, as the sky feels like it shatters around you. What? Wait, why you? Wait, what? 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 Each of you take I'm, I'm eight going. damage. I'm down. No, denied because Boom. it's allowed to be denied. I am a goddess overruler. <laughs> um, Riley, that's what you see. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle. Wait, 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 wait. I'm confused. Wait, Since what? Since I was listening to Natty, uh, and I know that there's a volcano on the island, I look to see if there's ash in the air or a plume or something that would indicate an explosion like that. Nope. I nope. refuse All to right. take any damage. I refuse. Oh, that's good. You take it anyways. So, no, I'm assuming all of us take this damage, damage, correct? That is incorrect. When you oh. went to save the cat, you got out of there. Uh, but the bandit that was on Anja, uh, Anja herself, Mozetta, and the bandit all look worse for wear as this crack resounds. Did it appear to be a spell effect? Well, I mean, that's the question to ask Riley. But it's your turn in combat. What are you doing? There's a pirate about to swing at you. Right. So there's an, do I take damage or is this just Anja no. that takes damage? Oh, okay. This is just okay. Anja that takes damage. Oh, oh, good. All right. So for yeah. the record, uh, Anja drops. Mm-hmm. Like, all right. So what exactly did I see before it dropped? Uh, you didn't see nothing. You saw a bandit captain swinging, uh, swinging at Mozetta. And Mozetta losing an arm. And then I just said, just, I feel whatever. And then all of a sudden, boom. boom. And then boom. Andre goes down. Maybe yep. it was a cannonball. Cool. So I'm, uh, oh, there's shit. a pirate swinging at me. There's a pirate swinging at you. All right. Yeah. I'm going to attack that pirate with my dagger. Okay. And, uh, ooh, net one. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping it going along tonight, folks. Yeah. Net one. Sure. Nothing happens. Do you have anything else you'd like to try? Um. Well, as a bonus, can I perceive what happened with the explosion? Like, can I try and we'll make an Arcana check? Arcana. Oh. Arcana. Okay. And that is a twenty-two. <coughs> Someone cast um, like a shatter spell. Okay. Okay. Don't know what that is. The spell shatter. Okay. Okay. That's what you detect happens, although you're not sure who did it. And with that, we are at Cleo. How dead do these people around us look? How dead do they look around you? Yeah. Uh, as in Anja? No, I mean like the people were fighting besides Anja. The people you're fighting. It looks like as soon as you guys uh, there's a few more, but this is clearly a losing battle for the pirates. They look like they're dying. They're losing one way or another. Either getting thrown off the boat uh, having a spell shatter their minds. And right. of course, Anja is down bleeding on the floor from her. Wait, right, right, right. Yeah. I rolled a nat 20 to. Oh, so you the just half damage. half damage. Oh, God. Okay, good thing I rolled a nat 20. Oh, shit. Is that Cleo? <clears throat> Can I. I can. I cast Burning Hands. Are you going for as many people as possible, or are you trying to prevent anyone you know from getting hurt? I would assume the people I know would be like by my side, not necessarily in front of me. Because I feel like I was a dick that was like, yo, like I'm going to go in the center of this and cast swords to spin around me. So I'm like kind of in the center of the fight. Not being a tank, being the squishiest person around. YOLO. Going for it. You can hit about three people. 
Okay, so it's a Dex 15 save. Okay. All right, lovely. Who gave me the ones? Uh, pirate dog dice for when you need to roll natural ones. Pirate dog dice. I should get some. Maybe I'll uh, not get nat ones anymore. Fine. It'll just be more nat ones. Yeah, exactly. You would have only taken like half the damage. So regardless, you get damage. Am I rolling individually or just collectively? Collectively. So everyone gets eight damage? Eight damage. Mm -hmm. And you take down two of the pirates. Mm -hmm. And a singeing one is still left on Riley. Anja, you are still down, so give me that first death. Goody, goody, goody. I made it with a 19. Damn it, it's too bad it wasn't a 20. <laughs> All right, and Bran, you are up. If I move towards Anja to use a healer's kit, will somebody be on me to attack me? No. Uh, it looked like the pirate that had been on Anja at the time was also caught in the blast and died. Very well. Or was blown off the ship. I will move in low, grab Anja, kind of pull her towards me and a little bit out of the fray. Mm -hmm. Then I will use my healer's feet, using my healer's kit to stabilize her. And let me just double check here. He's a plague doctor. He is. Um, uh, d -d 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 stabilizing entire creature. The creature also gains one hit point as an action. You can spend one of the healer's kits. So, oh, I see. Okay, I will use a full dose of the healer's kit. Mm -hmm. Put me to eight, and I'm going to heal her. Uh, a total of uh, seven hit points. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I, I imagine it's more like, you know, I, I put like a quick slap gauze on her and then smelling salts right underneath her nose. <laughs> All right. Anya, you are awake for the uh, tirade that's about to happen. Let's kind of say her, <laughs> I kind of say to her just before she, uh, as she wakes up, it's like, the queen has not called you yet. You still have work to do. I know. So creepy. Ow, that hurt. That hurt my head. Uh, 14 doesn't <laughs> hit you, Riley, does it? Nope. Swings and a miss. We have... Alright, that is a swing and a miss. And where's the dice? Alright, and Captain Barkist. Okay. Does... Uh, where am I looking at? A plus five. An 18 hit. Well, no. Who's he hitting? Oh. Yeah, he, Mosetta's still there, and you dragged uh, her away. Carol, <coughs> gain yeah. an additional hit point because I forgot that you also gain hit points equal to the maximum number of hit dice you have. Okay. I'll so set. Eight total. I'm back to where I was before. All right. Full, though. And Mosetta loses his arm. Oh. But with that, the battle looks like it's taken in hand, and Captain Kenza herself stands up to enter the fray. And let's see. Takes a swing at the captain. That is a 19 and a 1. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So we do 1d6, three die, four. And the bandit captain is looking awful right now. And Riley, we are back up to you. All right. I'm hopefully going to take down this pirate. 
Come on, Riley. 13, does it hit? 13 hits. Woo! All and right. Do... Four, four damage with my dagger. And he goes down. Finally. Woo! All <laughs> right. All right, Cleo, we are back up to you. Cleo, Cleo. Me? They yeah, it's you. Riley. Yeah, Riley just uh, killed his pirate. And... I am. Um, all right. I'm just apparently not doing so well. Yeah. My hearing is mm-hmm. It's the wig. It just curls up into your ears. Yeah. You're sticking down your brain. <laughs> well, Riley and Cleo, I don't know. It's fine. I'm not going to argue. I'm just stupid. It's, 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 yeah, you know, the. Purple hair, you know how they say it's blonde? It's purple hair. <laughs> I, I'm colorblind, so thanks for rubbing that in my face, Cleo. Yeah. All right. I... How many people are dead at this point? At this point, the pirate captain is the only one who is currently standing up. I don't know who's gonna hit. I attempt to attack with my dagger. Okay. A natural 20 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, But just barely. You get just barely. (laughs) You get six damage. How much? Six damage. Six damage? Does that double for the crit? What? Yeah, An unnatural twenty. The, uh, oh, it's unnatural oh. twenty. Never mind. Sorry, it wasn't a natural twenty. All right, Anja, you're on the ground. You whiffed smelling salts. I imagine it looks oh. like you know when you smell adventure sense, and it's the sewage <laughs> one, and it's right in your nose. So uh, oh, I'm not goodness, that many. I'm not that many feet away, right? So I can stand up and get back to the captain. Yeah. Take two swings. Oh, but do I have to pick up? I might have to pick up my weapons, don't I? You could probably pick up one on your one. All right. I will pick up the scimitar. Oh, that's a 17 on the die. So that's going to hit. And he swings his cutlass out to block the attack. I roll max damage on that. So that's 10 points of damage. And you knock his blade out of the way. Whap, and in through the chest <laughs> of Captain Barkus. And he dies. And you turn around and you just see the rest of the sailors shouting and yelling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the pirates have been defeated. Some of them have even jumped off. Uh, the ropes have been cut from the grappling hooks and the pirate ship is making its way off. Uh, Captain Kenza herself takes one look at Barkist, kicks him in the face, spits on him. Don't you ever fucking touch me again. Well, he won't. I believe I I have uh, ended his uh, days of ever doing that. If you want, uh, do you want to uh, heave him over the rail? It would be I my delight. Would you help me? Oh. Oh. Bram no. steps up like, no. Do no. It, he's Their dead. soul will be disturbed and they may raise again. Allow me to properly deal with their bodies. Okay. That is, that is fair. We, yeah, that's, that'd be great to have something come out of the ocean. Um. Brad, if you would first take a look at Mosetta and sew his arm back on, I would be much appreciated. Huh. And you just see Mosetta trying to pick up his arm with a grappling hook. Uh, it's it's pretty sad. Hmm. Do you really want his arm back on? I really want his arm back on, unless you would prefer to swap the decks 24-7. Sorry, 26-8. We have weird times here on this planet. <laughs> well, I will. 
but I will deal with the dead bodies first. As long as they get off my boat one way or another. All right. And with that, well, how are you taking care of the bodies, Bran? Um, I... We eat them! Make them into human jerky! Uh, no. <laughs> That's my team. Um, That's my influence. He's doing religious rites to prevent I will them from gather coming them up. back. I will probably, uh, yes, I will basically do a religious light through the Raven Queen, the goddess of death and rebirth. Uh, I will. Oh, that's fine. Anything that goes to a goddess, I completely agree upon. I will uh, speak over their bodies and give them a prayer and instruct each of their dead souls to give a secret uh, to the uh, goddess so that they may pass on and not be haunted forever as undead. Uh, once that is done, um, probably wrap the bodies mm -hmm. and then they can be uh, gently placed into the water for a uh, burial at sea. Yeah. And you've earned enough respect for the crew that they follow your orders exactly and they gently drop them into the sea Riley will discuss the loot that you managed to get off of them in a bit. Um, and as the uh, ship cleans up any of the blood that was on the boat, uh, uh, Banda, the bard, uh, half-elf, begins to play uh, uh, either a mournful tune, depending on Brad, or a celebratory tune. But we watch as the Hazel's Folly goes out into the sunset and our camera stays behind where we see floating in the water are the bodies wrapped up and they start sinking one by one until the final one where we see this clawed hand grab the body <laughs> and drag it under <coughs> and the camera goes black yeah. And that is the end of the very first session of Cthulhu Comes, Everybody Dies. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who was watching, and uh, thank you for watching us on Twitch. If you want to get in contact <laughs> with us, you can follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our archive, also on Twitch, also on YouTube. If you want to shoot the shit about the D&D, &D, maybe talk about what's going on and why was it so boring this first session you can talk to us on our discord channel uh, if you want to get some rpg gifts uh, you can find that on our short tiny you are oh my goodness are you okay i haven't had my glass of water today and uh it's gonna be awful if you want to play with one of our one shots uh you can certainly contact us either on twitter mhobo inc or mhobo inc at gmail.com uh, once again, thanks to our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. I would have killed the players had I had better dice. Pirate Dog Dice. You and have again, Pirate Dog Dice. I thank think... you, Hot Fish Games, Did for you... the Adventure Sense and for the Shine Project, which helped uh, elaborate these characters' backstories a little bit more. I personally can't wait to have them talk about it and flesh it out a little bit more. Um, also, don't forget about our podcast, because I don't want to look at my face, but I do want to listen to my sultry voice. Uh, normally, I would say, hold on, Cleo. Normally, I would give these people an opportunity to talk, but uh, maybe they'll join in and hop on on our Between the Rolls to say something. Uh, as it is, uh, if you don't want any spoilers or you don't want to know the adventures, this is the time for the players to take off their headsets. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll wave at you when it's done. La, 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 la. Wait, wait, that takes effort. It <laughs> takes effort. Let us know when we can come back. I'll Signal. Wave. I can't come back. Crap. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank uh, Sandy Peterson's uh, 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 and their Cthulhu 5e Mythos game. Hold on, I'm not quite done yet. Uh, we are playing the Ghoul oh. Island Adventure. Four books. It was their very first saga, and it looks like it's going to be an interesting one as they travel to Farzine. I'm going to wave so they know they can put their headsets on. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> Brand, I'll you have to hear that. Spoilers over. Okay. You know, I trust DJ not to actually go looking in the book, so it'll be fine. Uh, oh, you're talking about. That... All right, I got one. 
<laughs> Everybody wave to the camera and we will say good night. Good night, good everybody. Night. Thank you for watching. We'll Thank see you. you in two weeks, Thursday nights. Catch the next Saturday. Yes. The insanity. Bye.